Dracula. Absolutely beautiful. Look at this. There's the screen that I'll probably never get to see. Simon, ladies and gentlemen, completing our run. This is Simon, and he can apparently complete our run.
absolutely beautiful. Look at this. There's the screen that I'll probably never get to see. Simon, ladies and gentlemen, completing our run. This is Simon, and he can apparently complete our run. Congratulations, that was spectacular! Absolutely beautiful, look at this! There's the screen that I'll probably never get to see! Simon, ladies and gentlemen, completing our run! This is Simon, and he can apparently complete our run! Wednesday. We're live once again. It's four o'clock and you know what time it is. Top left button, Harrison. Press it. Yep. Once again, it's time for Electronics Club, where makers, shakers, movers, geeks and nerds get together for all kinds of cool chat around STEM. That's science, technology, engineering and math. Absolutely brilliant. It's great to be here again. How are you, Harrison? Good. Yeah, you might need to move closer to that microphone, dude. Put your foot on there just so that we can hear um, what you've got to say. So obviously in lockdown, uh, we've all been uh, homeschooling, haven't we? That's been a really mad experience, both for young people and for parents alike. Um, what STEM sort of stuff have you been doing this week? More STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art and maths. That's, a, that's an actual thing, you know. What have you been making this week? Nice and loud into the mic. Yeah, well, I've made a rain stick. Okay, cool. Yeah, that could be counted as that. A I steam. Guess. Why don't you grab it? Show it in action. Hang on one second. I'll See just... if you think this sounds like rain. Go for it. Near the mic. Near the mic. I'll get it good. Okay, it's, gonna, it's preparing it. Yeah. Okay. Yes! I reckon that's superb! Sounds more like a pancake. I think that's superb, like a pancake. Yeah, we, we actually noticed this morning that uh, Harrison was doing that and then he walked past his mom that was she was frying a pancake and it did sound the same, didn't yeah. it? It sounded really, really similar. Um, but a good little steam project that you've been doing this week. Satisfying as well. Very satisfying. Well, that is the kind of concept of them, really, isn't it? Is to provide um, kind of a pleasurable auditory experience, yeah? Um, great stuff. Okay, so um, we've also been doing what we do each week, which is uh, trawling the Scratch website, if you put Scratch plus MIT plus games or something like that into Google or your favorite search engine, you'll find great examples. There are thousands of Scratch games, not all of them made by young people, some of them made by actual programmers and designers and they're almost like proper games, aren't they? Really, really highly sophisticated games. Um, 
And we found one this week, which is really, really cool. So I'm just gonna work out how I can cut you at full screen. It should be uh, this, this uh, button here. Harrison, can you just come around and try not to hit the synthesizer? Quick as you can do. And um, what we'll do is I'll give you a full, we'll get your full screen action going. And then if you use uh, the cursor keys right and left, isn't it, and up, that's what it is. Now this is a really interesting platform. I'll just start it. Um, it's a really stunning game because the physics in it are especially unique. Yeah, gotta be really careful. It's a really hard one to play. Look at the floaty physics in there. Now we, we, we would have to dive deep into the code to show you, but it, this is to do with the gravity setting. Gravity is a really interesting feature within any scratch programming. Nicely done, sir, careful. Yeah, go. Um, you'll notice that the red areas mean certain death and anything else can be climbed on. As long as you get the timing right. Move out to the left a little bit, that's it. Go for it. Just bounce it up. Why are you having trouble with that? You've got to go up. Up button. You can climb, that's it, yes, you've done it. Um, yeah, the gravity function, normally you're looking to emulate normal gravity that we're used to. Uh, but if you mess with it, as as the programmer of this game has done, you can get some really interesting effects. You can get over to that little island in the middle. Jump, yes, and again, jump, jump, go, 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 run. Good, you got some good momentum there. Oh, you just bailed if you committed to that. Let's see if you can get through this final cave section. This game is programmed by a coder called Sushi1000. And if you look it up, it's called Planes. Um, spelt like the open planes rather than the planes that you fly. Sushi1000. You'll find his work or her work on the MIT Scratch Games Emporium. Come on, let me try then. Let me try it. I'm just, just going to take over. There go. This is me playing now, folks. Yeah, did it. It's going to get really hard in a second, though. Look at this next stage. Oh, no, this is quite easy, actually. Hang on, I'm just going to keep going. If you've just joined us, welcome to... Oh, welcome. We'll, we'll cut back now. We'll finish it there. Welcome to Electronics Club, uh, where uh, we talk about all things STEM-related. Um, we like to um, feature Scratch games each week. Uh, we trawl the web to find the best one that we... Uh, that we can use as inspiration. And, and one of the reasons that we do that is that we've been working on our own game, haven't we, Harrison? Yeah. Um, and uh, we've actually um, moved it on quite a lot this week. So what I'll try and do is just bring it up. It's gonna go into Scratch uh, and uh, load it in there. In fact, I'll cut to that screen so that you can uh, see what I'm doing. I'm just going into the uh, the load screen. So I've saved it on the hard drive on my computer. What's it called, this one? Electronics Club Final, there we go, let's bring it up. Um, and you'll see that the code there has been uh, massively expanded. Um, you can't see it all there, but let's just shrink it down a little bit. Um, and uh, the, the main thing that we've done this week is we've added some music. So hopefully, if I just go full screen, Harrison, if you wanna take the controls. Remember this one is Space Jump, this one, okay. Let's get rid of the, uh, the playlist. So we're using space to jump, uh, right and left. Hang on, have I pressed the uh, go? There you go. Just restart the music. Jump up, jump up. So what, no, no, don't, don't, oh yeah. That's right, try and use the platforms if you can. Don't just run along the floor, there you go. You can see that the gravity in our game is very different to the one from Sushi 1000, the game previously played called Planes. Um, we've still got lots of work to do on this. And what we're going to do, eventually is make the floor lava. Have you ever played that game? The floor is lava, yeah? You like that? The floor is lava is a really, really cool game. Um, where you just designate the floor as lava and then you just climb around the furniture. There's the uh, the music from the game. Do you like it? That's the music from our Scratch game that I designed in my, um, my uh, music program, which is really, really cool. So yeah, um, really happy with the progress of that. We're now to a point where, you know, I think we could we could just about now make the floor lava and the whole thing would, would start to work out. So, happy so far? Yeah. With the Electronics Club official game? Yeah. All right, let's give it some round of applause because I reckon, well, you have especially worked hard on that. The artwork's really, really good and you've seen it go from 
uh, a Scratch Cat generic game, like the ones that you start with on Scratch, uh, uh, through a kind of a geometry run phase into a side-scrolling platformer. Um, and we've actually uploaded that version that you can see onto Scratch. So if you, if you search for Electronics Club, I'm guessing you'll find it. I'm not quite sure what we named the game. It might be called Lockdown, uh, Lockdown Platform or something like that. I'm not sure, but you'll find it um, if you search on the Scratch Games website. So that's really, really cool stuff. So um, one of the other things that we do each week is we receive applications from various people uh, on Twitter. Uh, this one uh, came in on Twitter this week um, for what we call setup of the week. And I reckon you'll like where we're going with this one. This one is from a guy uh, called John. Um, and he's a local guy. He actually lives in Lincolnshire, which is strange because we're broadcasting live from Lincoln in the heart of England today. And just look at this setup. Isn't that an absolute cracker? So you'll see he's got a fiery steering wheel and foot pedals, which suggests that when John is not uh, flying around with his amazing wraparound monitor, isn't that stunning? Uh, it can also be turned into a racing car for racing simulators. Looks like he's using Microsoft Simulator on there, or maybe X-Plane. I'm a bit of a simulator fan myself. Um, so you can see on the right-hand side, he's got room uh, to put some more aircraft controls. And if the, um, if the images cycle through, you can see on the left, he's got his throttle quadrant um, with all of his, his buttons and so on, which his left hand is on at the moment. He's probably using the, you could have a joystick on the right, couldn't you? Or you could put what's called a yoke in the middle, which would replace the steering wheel, which would be um, very, very cool, I think, to uh, simulate actual flight so well done to John of Lincoln do you want to give him a, uh, an air horn yeah I think he deserves one don't you a of applause maybe you know why not he's worked hard um, must have cost an awful lot though. yeah remember you're very quiet you've got to be really loud on that microphone well done to John okay okay we now get down to the uh, the nitty gritty so the real purpose of uh, electronics club each week and that is that we build electronics projects and this is made possible by Maplin, which is a company here in the UK, um, who used to be able to visit on the high street and now they're online. They supply loads of electronics, everything that you can think of from, you know, gaming keyboards and a mouse for your gaming setup right through to LED components and heat sensors and security stuff and all that kind of stuff. And what they've done is they've put together a package that involves a Raspberry Pi, uh, a keyboard, a mouse, uh, a breadboard and a bunch of components that we've been using each week to build with. And they've done us uh, a really... A solid one in that they've said anyone that wants to get this kit can get it at cost which means that they don't make any money out of it so you won't be able to get these components cheaper anywhere as far as I'm concerned uh, and they're doing it to support lockdown uh, we're all doing this for free aren't we Harrison because we wanted to create something under lockdown for young people and um, uh, their parents brothers and sisters and whatever uh, to get the teeth into projects that they can uh, build themselves um, and so what we're going to do is uh, take you to our project number five right now, the fifth project. First week we made what? Can you remember? What was project number one? Nice and loud into the mic. Um, was it like the indestructible box or something like that? No, project number oh, one was oh, that, blinking LED. I was thinking about... Blinking LEDs? Yeah. And what was project number two? It was um, building a heat sensor. Correct, heat sensor. Very, very good. Very good, Harrison. Project number... Three, you weren't here for because you weren't very well. Your brother did it. That was really cool. We made our own games controller. And we um, we had a version, yeah, in Python of Tetris. Yeah. Project number four last week, what did we do? I think we sh shone a laser on the heat uh, sensor. Yeah, what we did was we turned the heat sensor into a thermometer because we got the LEDs to do a readout and we set various temperatures for that. And that worked really well, didn't it? Now... This week's, I think, is probably the best. It's a real move on. It's uh, a little more complicated than the others, but not too much. Yeah. Uh, believe it or not, this week, we're making a drum machine. So all of these projects have been made with the same kit. This is the one that I'm most excited about. So would you like to pick up uh, the camera and give us a shot there? The yeah. camera. Oh, yeah. There you go, buddy. <laughs> Just hold the camera like that. Literally there you go. Cool. There you go. Hold it there. Okay. So, I'm just going to mind my hand. I'm just going to click to it. Uh, we've actually got a close-up, if I can just get to it. There we go. Ace. Thank you so much. Right, let's move in. So, this is the wiring. Now, the way that this works, if you're new to Electronics Club, it might be an idea to uh, 
direct you to maplin.co.uk slash electronics club where you'll see the downloadable directions and any software for the projects that's, that is required uh, all available on that website and you'll see what I've done here to get this breadboard into this situation okay I'm just going to give you a, a brief rundown this is the negative rail here where the black is okay? and that black cable goes into what are called the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi that's a general purpose in and out if you want to know the geeky technical definition and this is the positive rail here and these pins are labeled in the instructions so it's very very straightforward you just connect them in this position uh, on the bottom and the top of the lowest rail on the breadboard and then into these two pins which are labeled with numbers and photographs in the instructions and then what you've got are three buttons which come in your kit um, and these enable you to trigger anything you can trigger any action that you want on the Raspberry Pi what's really exciting about this project is that um, it gives you the opportunity to hardware control the software within scratch now many people don't know that scratch with its super simple uh, child-friendly interface enables you to do cool stuff like this would you like to hold this again just keep it focused on the breadboard like that. That's it. Um, which is really really cool um, it's quite amazing when you think about it that you can hardware con uh, control uh, scratch there you go thank you still got to get that shot isn't it Harrison so small these components are tiny so what you've got are these um these three buttons here one two three and each button then gets power it's uh, on the right hand side and then gets a little resistor which is the smallest resistor that you have the three is three of them because there's three buttons and then it gets a little signal path and that's as simple as it gets now the next thing that you need to be aware of is that i've whacked this usb into my raspberry pi this is the raspberry pi that you get in the kit uh, that's the output so that you can see the source of it in a second there's the power that goes into the uh, the plugs and then there's the keyboard and the mouse both plugged in on the other two USBs but this is interesting this is where you download uh, sorry this is where you save any software that you create so for some of our projects like the first one you need to download some code put it on here and whack it in there for this project I actually created the code myself because it was really really simple so if you'd like to take this in your hands reach across there you go nice and carefully that means that I can cut to the output of the Raspberry Pi. So what you should be seeing now, hopefully, is the output of the Raspberry Pi. If I can just move my house. No, not just yet. There you go. Yeah, you can put that down. Good man. There you go. So there's the Raspberry Pi code. Let's just bring my little mouse across. Now, let me just open this full screen so you can really see it clearly. Right. So what I need to do is I need to uh, load the code that I manually put in so that when I press those little buttons that I've just shown you uh, the the um, scratch program and Raspberry Pi know what to do with them that's all it is and it's actually a really simple piece of code there we go I'll try and zoom in a little bit there we go these are all the same they just have a different button configuration because we've got three buttons so that's G uh, that's a GPIO 21 uh, that's the what will be my left button when I film it in a minute that's GPIO 20 and that one is GPIO 16 they are the positions of the buttons on the uh, as they come into the Raspberry Pi okay so it's nothing too complicated Let's see if I can just zoom out a little bit so there's the code now what I should do is stop the music and uh, try and trigger the buttons right if you could pick that up there try and hold that there there we go try and keep it focused on the drum machine okay and then what I've got I've got a little screen that I'm, that I'm hoping is going to bring up uh, no, that's not it is that it yeah that's it there there you go why don't you spin it around get a get a horizontal shot is that going to work yeah that's better could you hold that there if you lean forward and you hold it for me is that all right I'm just going to turn the music off buddy one second because we're going to create our own music aren't we that's the idea so what you need to be focused on look is the is this drum set there yeah. got it see that picture there got it cool right now I've loaded the code uh, into scratch I now need to do what you do uh, in the way that you do when you're using a scratch game and that's hit the green flag to get it going so you keep focused on there that's right good doing some good camera work there Harrison okay so now the code is running you should have just seen me click on that just there next to scratch cat 
which means if it's working correctly, you just turn the speakers on. When I press these buttons, I should get. Yeah! Look, that's G. No, 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 don't do that. You just focus on there. You just focus on there. That's the, that's the bass button. I'll turn it up a bit. That's much louder. So that's GPIO 21, this is GPIO 20. And that is, that's a snare sound. And what's this one over the, uh, over the right hand side, look. Uh, Keep focused on it. The drum. Cymbal. Uh, hi-hat. Yeah, that's, that's a hi-hat. Yeah. Should we try and make a song out of it? Well, we could try that, just give me two seconds. Keep focused on there. Keep focused on there, there you go. What I want to try and do here is just zoom in a bit and show you, I just want to make sure that you can hear me on the microphone. Uh, on the left hand side look so that's GPIO 21 that's the drum there and that is playing a sound called a drum bass one now these sounds are all from scratch I'll show you where they're from you go into the sounds tab over here so if I play that that's the sounds there and I've chosen that sound um, out of a whole range of sounds that you can choose within scratch all of these uh, Necessary steps are shown very clearly on mapping.co.uk, so you can find them. And there's the middle one, if you can make sure that you're focused on that, Harrison, there we go. And that is GPIO 20, and that plays a snare drum where I'm circling the mouse there, look. Great sound that, isn't it? And this final one, this is GPIO 16, there. And that plays a hi-hat where my mouse is circling now. Right, Harrison, I'll take over camera work and you can lean forward and try and do your best to get a beat going so uh, the thing is it goes dun -dun every time just go for it man i'm sure you can you can handle it it's really hard it is hard but it's well worth it what should i what beat should i make just any beat just express yourself dude Don't forget the hi-hat on the end. Excellent. I reckon that was really good. Well done, you. Absolutely superb job. That's absolutely brilliant. I'm really pleased with that. Um, it was quite tricky to film and do it at the same time. But that's actually that's absolutely superb. So that is project number five. Um, looks difficult because of the amount of elements that uh, you've got to plug into the board. Uh, but I can tell you honestly, I'm no coder, okay? I've never learned to code. In fact, this coding for the, uh, these projects over the last few weeks has probably been the most coding that I've ever actually stuck at and done. What do you think? Are the projects relatively straightforward? Yeah, yeah? remember to be nice and loud. Compared to the level of, uh, of scratch that you do at school, how difficult or easy have they been? Well, like, it's only a teeny bit harder because we do quite, like, quite hard at school like we made um, a spiral art thing yeah where it was like um, turning spiral loads of different colors within scratch i remember you doing that and i had like a picture of it yeah yeah and how and how more difficult are these projects in terms of using actual hardware like blinking leds thermometers and drum machines um well they're different we don't really use stuff like that at school it's it's like really fun yeah those types of things we just like programs get scr um, scratch at school scratch and games and visual yeah. effects so actually it's quite straightforward isn't it this moving on to hardware most people don't even know that you can do hardware with scratch but anyway talking of hardware we're going to finish things off today with a really cool experiment using jack uh, harrison's laser so you grab the laser i'll grab the bowl this is mo in most like all of our videos it is it's featured yeah. in almost every episode yeah, so you okay bring it over right so here's the bowl Ah, oh, I must be mad bringing water into the uh, workshop. Right, so what we're going to prove is that you can actually bend light, okay? Which is bonkers because light is supposed to only travel in straight lines. And there are some materials that can do that, but they're like really rare. Yeah. Absolutely. And this is something you can do at home. This is so something you can do at home. Well said. So it's a, a normal drinks bottle. We've got a, a hole in it there because we've, we've pierced a hole in it. There you go, so there's water dribbling out of it. Um, now, when I take this off and release the pressure, equalize the pressure, there's going to be a fountain of water coming out that you'll be able to see. Now, 
If Harrison shines his laser, which is a straight beam of light, into this back portion of the bottle, you'd expect the light to come out, and it probably will do, but when he gets it in line with the hole, you'll notice, I'm not sure if it'll pick it up on the camera, I'm hoping so, if we do it in the uh, front of the table, we're hoping that the effect will be that the light starts to bend. So here we go, it's gonna take the top off. You should see the spout, there's the spout. Can you see that? Yes, you can. Go for it, Harrison, see if you can line it up. Quite hard. Line it up. There, there you go, look. The light is coming down. See if you can get it really lined up. The light is coming down. Can you see that the when that fountain turns to blue, it, it goes all the way down to here. Can you get it right in line? You focus not on the screen, you focus on that. Try and get it right where the hole comes out. There you go. And the light, very obviously you won't be able to see from here. Unless maybe I'll bring the, oh, I can't bring the camera in. The, the, the laser light is actually lighting the bottom of the pan when you get that angle right. So I'm hoping that you've seen this from where you're sat um, with the camera a couple of feet away. There we go. I'll just put that back on there. But that's absolutely amazing, isn't it? Well done, Harrison. Well done, first of all, for finding out that experiment. Do you want to put it on the floor for me? Yep. Thank you very, very much. You can be my uh, my laboratory assistant. Yep. yep, that's okay. Just be careful you don't... Uh, Cheers, you, you jump off. Yeah. Um, well done to Harrison for finding the experiment in one of his uh, science books. But also for proving... The way that light refracts. Now, here's the thing, you see. Here's the thing. Light does only work in straight lines. What's actually happening there is that the, the bead of water that you saw coming out of the bottle, even though it's curved, the laser is going up and down inside the beam, and it's bouncing off the edges. It's refracting off the edges of the water, almost like sending light down a tunnel. And so that's why... When uh, you, you use a uh, fiber optic cable, which is one of the ways that people get broadband and send data around the world, you can turn corners with it. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to do it, you see. If light only went in a straight line. Light does go in a straight line, but it bounces off, forms triangles, and that's how it's doing it. It's bouncing off that bead of light, making its way into the bottom of the pan. Isn't that a great experiment? Yeah. We've got one more thing to do, and I'm hoping that you can remember it. Uh, it's the math joke. Uh, it's the math joke, well done. Now. Um, not every week, but most weeks we've done a maths joke, and normally we've researched them from various sites on the internet. But this one, uh, because uh, Harrison couldn't find one that suited our needs, he actually made it up. So I'm really interested to know if he's made a good joke. So Harrison, wh what's your maths joke of the week? Why are cows so clever? Why are cows so clever? I don't know. Because they use a calculator. Nice! That's a goodie! I like that! Absolutely superb! Well done! Great effort there, Harrison. That's a really good joke. What fact? A fact? Did you know? Yep. You can bring a cow upstairs, but you can't get it downstairs. Is this a riddle? It's an actual fact. Is it? You can't bring it back downstairs. Why? I don't know. It's just a thing. That's totally bizarre. I have no idea why that would be, but I'm I'm fascinated to maybe experiment with that. And being as we live in a farming community, we can probably even test that out. So who knows? If we get proof of it, you'll be the first to know. That is it for episode five of Electronics Club with our amazing uh, drum machine. Harrison, play us out with the drum, mach with the drum machine, please. Um, if you'd like to know more about the work that we do on Electronics Club, then you can contact me on Twitter. It's probably the best one. It's Jason Bradbury. Um, uh, other than that, leave some comments. Enjoy the video. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all again for more STEM craziness. Thanks for joining us, Harrison. Come on, baby. Drum up a beat.